Well, like a roof over our head, food is something that most of us take for granted. But an estimated 4 million people in the UK are living in what's described as food poverty. And the charities that are trying to feed them are struggling to keep up. Kervin Julian, who runs a soup kitchen in Coventry, takes up the story. Starve in Britain. It's something you associate with days long gone. Most of the time it's like a pack of soup noodles a day, which is like 17p. Sounds a bit far-fetched in this day and age. I'm telling you, there are some mothers who go without food so that their children is a it. choice. I can't believe it. But I know it's true, and help from charities can only go so far. Yeah, that should last me about two weeks, if not even longer. Every week on a Sunday, you'll find me here feeding the homeless and the hungry. Right, you want to get served? Get in the queue, please. Recently, the queues have been getting longer. I want to find out why. Now, I'm no angel, but I'm working overtime on this with my charity, Inessis. And we're not the only ones busy. Food banks like this one in Coventry are inundated. Volunteers are feeding around 150 mouths every week. These people are really desperate. We've fed over 4,400 people already. Half of those are children. Some people would actually say that they, they, they don't believe that that's happening in this modern day society in this country. In this city, we know that 20% of the population, that's about 59,000, are living on the breadline. That is, after paying for fuel, paying for food and everything else, they have nothing left. And that is an amazing statistic. So who are these hidden hungry? At another distribution centre, I meet 18-year-old Alicia. Her £53 a week job seekers allowance was stopped 10 days ago because she forgot to bring an essential document. So Alicia, tell me a bit about how you're living. Um, most of the time it's like a pack of super noodles a day, which is like 17p, like the cheap ones from Asda. Um, you know, just sort of thing, just boiled with a kettle, like hot water from a kettle, because I ain't got a cooker or microwave. And are you getting any help and support? Um, my mum's like looking after my son, so she can't really keep affording to feed me as well as my brothers and herself, so not much. So what, would, what have you actually got in your cupboards? What, if you was to go into your kitchen now and we went into your cupboards, what have you actually got in your cupboards? At what the moment, been... it's a few pans and a top of marge. That's it? That's it. Today, Alicia will eat. She's got enough to keep her going for three days. She's one of the lucky ones. Hi, Claire. Yeah, you all right? I'm fine, darling. Claire's got five children, and feeding them is her priority. Tell me, how bad is it at its worst? At its worst, it could be, I'm thinking, right, what am I going to eat tonight, and what's going to last till, the, till next week when I get paid again? And it could be three or four days till, that's, till that happens. And, you know, I've got to sort of find things that I can put together. That's how it is, really. That's as bad as it gets. Have you ever found yourself having to go without food yourself, just so that the family can eat? Yeah on occasion. Yeah. It's hard to say that, but yeah. Oxfam says one in seven poor people in the West Midlands regularly go without food to ensure their families can eat. Food prices are around 11% higher in real terms than they were five years ago. But most benefits will rise by more than 5% from April, in line with September's inflation figures. The Chancellor says that will significantly boost the incomes of the poorest. I know we're seeing real desperation here, but what really bugs me is that people think that these lot are just a bunch of sponges, or even worse, that they don't even exist. People like the former Conservative Minister Edwina Curry, who refuses to believe that there's anyone going hungry in this country. I had a run-in with her not so long ago on a Five Live debate about poverty. People are desperate, so desperate that the children are eating the food before it comes out of the packet. They can't. That, I'm sorry. This is real. Uh -huh, is no, real. you may be getting hysterical about it, but I don't think you're talking sense. 
Edwina's views are well known, but do others accept this is happening? Yes, I would believe it. This I think society. it's disgusting that people in this day and age should, should be starving and families that can't afford to feed the kids. It's disgusting. If I told you that there were some mothers who have to force themselves not to eat in order for them to give their children something to eat, would you believe that? I wouldn't think it's necessary. There's I'm, a safety net for them. I'm telling you there are some mothers who go them. without food so that their children is a it. choice. I can't believe it. So some need to see more evidence. I don't have to look far. Sam's turned up at my soup kitchen with his girlfriend. He says he's recently become homeless. Are you starving at times? Yeah, definitely. Starving. Are you well, eating a lot today. less than what you're normally used to eating? Um, yeah, definitely. I've quite a healthy appetite normally, but cutting down because you haven't got any money is pretty bad, I would say. Are you also, are you looking for work? Yeah, definitely. Want, want a job. Daily? Yesterday. Yeah, yeah. If, if somebody gave you a job today, would you, you bite their hand off for it? Yeah, easily. Or the leg, whatever. Everything I see is telling me there are more hungry people out there. So surely there's someone in charge keeping count. It's quite hard to be clear about it, to say, yes, there's, you know, 20% more or whatever it is. And that's because in Britain we don't have a regular system for monitoring who's going hungry or whether people are living in what you might call food poverty. And Professor Dowler isn't convinced that the government is doing enough. My fear is that it gets left to food banks. Now, now I'm not against what you do in, in giving out free food to people who need it. People are hungry. I, I accept they, need they, they need to be fed, of course. But if that becomes the answer, then that is a totally inadequate sticking plaster that isn't going to solve the problem. I can't believe that there's no official measure. I want to talk to someone in government about this, but it appears that everyone's too busy. So instead, I've got a statement from DEFRA. A DEFRA spokesperson says, there are a number of schemes to help the most vulnerable in society afford and have access to nutritious food, such as giving low-income families vouchers for essential foods and giving school pupils extra free fruit and veg. Rising food prices put pressure on families' budgets and we're monitoring developments very closely. So the government's keeping an eye on things, but is it going far enough? I think without charity, a lot of people would starve. Yeah. Thanks, thank you. After the intervention of the food bank, Alicia's cupboards are full. Her job seeker's allowance has been reinstated, but she's still living hand to mouth. Um, normally I'd have a lot more noodles, to be honest with you, um, and less of the snacks, but... No, if, if you could actually afford to eat, w would that be what you'd buy and put in your cupboard anyway? No, definitely not. I would, okay. I would never sit there and buy all that stuff. I'd buy a lot better stuff that would fill, up, fill me up. Okay, so, so what up. would you prefer to eat if you had an opportunity to choose some of the things that you could buy? I'd rather be able to cook a massive dinner, really, or a fry up or something, but... <laughs> I ain't got the right resources for it and I can't afford to buy all my stuff anyway. The sad case is that this, there's, there's not just one Alicia. Um, there are hundreds and thousands of people living that sort of existence. Because um, that's what it is in existence. There's no purpose or meaning to it. It's, it's an existence. Um, just going from day to day, hand to mouth, um, wondering where the next meal is going to come from. I don't know what the answer is, but I do believe it's going to take a lot more ordinary people doing what I'm doing to step into that gap for the meantime. We've just got to do what we can. Um, there has to be hope, there has to be hope. Without hope, we're finished. So, what do you think? Should people be more self-reliant? Is hunger a reality here in the Midlands? And if so, why? Well, you can join in the discussion on our Facebook page, Inside Out West Midlands, where you can also find out what you can do to help. Now, it wasn't 